Hey, with our esteemed guest, McKinney Hanson, how are you doing? I am so good. It is such a beautiful day today, and although it is going to be a little hot today, I love summertime. I love the monsoon seasons. I love that Cedar City has all seasons throughout the year. It's an incredible blessing. And we can have all seasons in one day as well. <laughs> well, very true. I've, I've seen it snow in July, in fact. So it's a lot of fun to just live in this area. And, and it really goes to show, like, because a lot of people are still moving here, you know, that it's still pretty incredible for all of the things going on. Welcome to Wired Wednesday. This is your host, McKinnon Hansen. In studio today, we have Jesse Huntsman with Bear in the Valley Beats. And I love talking about this company. One, because I bought a beef in January. Jan Not yes, January-ish. Yes. Um, I remember it still being colder because like when I had to sort through all of the different varieties of cuts that I got, I just put them on my driveway, but I knew they wouldn't, you know, overheat necessarily. So I wouldn't do that now. No, <laughs> no, no. We should avoid no. it right now. I Right, we should totally avoid it. But what what's incredible is that Bear in the Valley Meats is a locally grown beef product, and you can buy them in quarters, halves, and holes, and you can essentially take care of your entire meat need for an entire year through this through this company. Yeah, we will, if a person needs a quarter, we'll try to help you find. We have other people come in for quarters and we'll try to coordinate with you. And then a half or a whole, we just bring it right to you. Right, which is incredible. And and really, let's... <sighs> By the way, last time I got teased because I didn't bring a sample, but I did this oh. time. Oh, but Dr. T doesn't get his sample. Chris will get his, but Dr. T will not. He might be a little offended. Uh, he might. He'll be coming in later on today. Oh, okay. Like, probably Fair. as soon as we get, well, I, probably as soon as I get done with radio, actually. Fair. So. Well, what's, you know, what's really fun is people don't really, I did this last year too with a, with a pig product, okay? You don't realize how much uh, meat is in a whole thing or a half a thing or like a pig, like when I asked, I mean pig specifically, cause I could order custom cuts from, um, from let's see, I ordered the pig from Kayabab Meats over in Fredonia cause I bought the pig over at the, uh, the, at their livestock show. Well, when they said, well, how do you want, how thick do you want your chops? I'm like, uh, like an inch, like thinking that that's what I bought at the store. My brain says it's, well, what I have at the store, a thick, an inch thick, pork chop it takes 30 minutes to barbecue <laughs> 30 minutes yep we find a lot of people when they come in they the big hurdle for a lot of people when it comes to buying this way is they just kind of feel overwhelmed with what are they going to get what is it looking at how does it go we figure for most families a half a beef will last anywhere between nine months to just over maybe 14, 15 months, about a year is what right. we assume. Right. And the cuts, when it comes to that, sometimes they're just like, oh yeah, this sounds right. And then they get it and they're a little... Intimidated. Thick. I was so intimidated. <laughs> Jesse, let's be real. I have never in my entire life had just, oh, here's a full, here's a full thing. I've done pigs before, so I was kind of like, okay with like what that's supposed I'm to look like. pretty sure that with one beef carcass you can feed a family of five for almost a year oh yeah well or two you yeah. know depending yeah it really it's um we we've had a couple of our people go through and like we said for for a, a half for just a random family will be about a year depending on how much you eat mm -hmm. sometimes we find less sometimes a little more but um when it comes down to it one of the big things is like how do we take care of these cuts what are we looking for um i trained as a butcher so I can actually talk a customer through if they're nervous about it and kind of explain. Right, right, because like some of these cuts showed up, okay? And they come in, they come in beautiful, beautiful boxes, okay? Most of them, like you get a lot of ground beef, right? Oh yeah. I love the ground beef because it's one individually packaged from a pound to a two pound package, fully sealed on Facebook Live, we're, we're streaming and we're showing it's like seal wrapped in a square, which stacks so beautifully in a freezer. But like when you get it, you're like, oh my gosh, there's like so many things. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to cook, right? <laughs> so like I just go shopping in my freezer. I pull out, oh, well this sounds good tonight. And it's, you know, 
uh, beef bits for like stews and things, or ground beef for spaghetti nights and meatball nights or things, or we loved the tri-tips and the brisket, you know, and, and knowing that those things existed and you can get them all in one, one package. And, and it gives you kind of the opportunity. And, and because we kind of offer the custom cut without, we don't charge any extra for the custom cut. It gives you the opportunity to kind of get what you want. So for example, we have a few customers that they come to us and they say, listen, we have a lot fast paced, a lot of things going on. I need quick cook. So we're going to go just hamburger and steak. Fantastic. You go nuts with it. Right. And we'll get it all, not only the prime steaks that you think of, but a lot of other steaks that maybe you weren't aware, but are just delicious and really easy to go to. On how many day. different steaks are in a cow? Well, how many different cuts? Because once I get to a roast, I can cut those up into cowboy steaks really quick. And suddenly you have a whole bunch of extra stuff that otherwise you wouldn't have had. Right. And, you know, hey, among my favorites still is the chuck steaks. You take them, chop, just chop it off, especially that first two inches right off of the prime, that prime oh, yeah. rib area. It's one of the best cuts you'll have, and it's nice and easy. Oh, beautiful. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, I'm just saying. In fact, we're not to get everybody talking. hungry <laughs> first right. thing in the morning. In fact, we're smoking a couple chuck roasts uh, today at home. Oh, how fun. And chuck roasts are wonderful on the smoker. They fall apart so beautifully. And, oh, I mean... That's, I think the real thing is a lot of people, uh, they get intimidated by a roast or a cut mm -hmm. of thing, but really with most things, it's just, it's just being calm and easy with it, enjoying that thing and, and realizing where it's from, you can kind of go with it. I love the rounds for my, for my steaks. Cowboy steak is a great one. Mm -hmm. I love it when I want my cube steaks. I love it when I want my, my stew meat and stuff like that. I love to have the flap and the flank right here on the stomach of the animal. They are just beautiful. They're quicker to cook than yep. the brisket, yep. but like a flap steak will taste almost exactly the same with about half the time it would take to cook a whole brisket. And it's a little smaller. So if it's just you and a friend or something, you can go nuts. Seriously. Or the tacos you can make from that. We could go all day long. I'll tell you what, so, I love a good brisket myself. Oh, oh. man. Oh, oh yeah. so many things. So many things. Okay. <laughs> you so, do really well on a brisket. You, you've made a permanent friend out of me. <laughs> fair. Fair. Yes. So let's, let's quantify size. There's a huge size discrepancy going on right now. And it's in national news, apparently, or at least state news, that a 4,200-pound Mexican bull gored somebody. One... I, I'm not we, sure a 4,200-pound bull would be able to move fast enough to gore. <laughs> right. And like that it might be size, able to <laughs> that, that size. I'm not of sure it could move off of its legs. It might be just down like I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a whole other thing, right? But that size of animal is the size of a Chevy 2500. Yeah, it's it's huge, guys. Like most of our cow -ca like cow calf operations here, even with their bulls, we're looking at a Toyota Tacoma, and I'm talking about like the '90s series. Okay, not the Today series oh, yeah. of that truck. They are not much bigger than that, okay? And 90% of the bulls around here are hand-fed. I kid you not, fed off the back of a truck are gentle, and the producers train them that way because they have kids and teenagers coming oh, up yeah. into their productions that they don't want these bulls to be aggressive with. And as soon as they show any sign of aggression, the producers get rid of them. So, just a let's let's really quantify what a full normal bull looks like in our area, right? It's the size of a Toyota Tacoma, not a 4200 pound animal. Those are like in world record type sizes. They don't exist here, guys. Like I'm just saying. So, a lot of us spent a couple of years in Texas and actually helped out on a cattle ranch down there. And yes, they are very quite tame animals, very sweet animals. Uh, because most cattle ranches are uh, family-owned farms. Yeah. Right. So they have whole generations coming up. So the reality of whatever's going on in the news is limited. Do a fact check, guys. Like, <laughs> yes. legitimately. If I took 4,200 pounds of butter, I could fill up a Chevy 2,500, <laughs> like, tail or truck bed. Yeah. yeah. A lot okay. of times you're looking, you're looking like... 1600 at the really far end you might get 21 a whole that, 21 yeah 
And and that's a big, that is a big animal. My cow came in, like, we estimated it at, like, 14, 1500 or something. Yeah. It came in at 17, and I was like, oh, man, like, this is so much, so much meat. Like, I had a hard time with it, right? <laughs> but, like, I love that it blasts me through the year and whatnot, and oh, that yeah. you guided me through the different cuts and things. So, selfishly, I have to ask this on the air, because I, I kind of want a commitment from you. Okay. Okay. Corn Fest and Enterprise is coming up. Yes. We're going to have a variety of decorative corn out and variety of, of vegetables to purchase from Bear in the Valley. The big, the big thing that we've got right now is a, is a huge amount of sweet corn, of course. Yeah. And we'll have some other things available as the season permits. And what doesn't go better with the brisket than sweet corn? Uh, more sweet corn. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and we, you know, we should be ready. It's the 24th of August, which is the second to last uh, weekend in August. And then we are actually also in the process of getting ready for Halloween and, and those fall seasons. We will have a ton of pumpkins and squash and gourds and all sorts of decoratives, popcorns, Indian corns, colorful. If you like your tortillas, some of the best you can get out of it, some very old varieties. We're loving it. I am so excited for that. And the other thing we need to do is we already need to start planning for Christmas. Yes. yes. Okay. By the way, Christmas in July is like a real thing because you're like, it's six months away. For a parent, that's really daunting, you know, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. But one thing that you can do is get on Bear in the Valley's purchase list for your Christmas roast. And what better gift to give than food? Absolutely. Right? I'll tell you what, some of the best uh, Christmas dinners I've ever had was actually not necessarily turkey but a good honey honey glazed ham right well there's oh, ham and do. stuff but like the briskets the prime ribs oh yeah the things you can do with beef is endless i'm just saying and what's really incredible and i'm going to insert my own testimonial here okay so because i purchased from bear in the valley and i understand the genetics component of this and we talked about the genetics in the last show so we won't go too deep here but their marbling has spider veins okay Basically saying that fat, the good fat, the good juicy fat that just, mm, The source right? of most of the flavor in beef. <laughs> is throughout the entire animal. It's not in chunks and huge veins and ribs where you like only chew on literally the fat. Yeah. But it is infused throughout the entire animal. And so what you get with your prime cuts versus your hamburger it's the same quality and it just literally falls apart in your mouth. And we're able to get it dry aged just enough so that when you're sitting it down, you're getting a top quality product every time. And, you know, and it's the consistency. of that marbling too. I mean, I, I have a nephew who is actually a butcher up in the Salt Lake area. Yeah. And I asked him one time, what is the difference between a regular steak and say widened beef? And he says, it's all about the marbling. Oh yeah. Right. And people just, they go into the grocery store. You look at all of the marbling and you're like, wow, that's like a lot of marbling and it's going to be really good. And then you throw it on the grill and you're like, wow, this is not exactly what I was thinking. Through Bear in the Valley Beef. It's an incredible flavor throughout the entirety of it. Mm -hmm. But you see spidering more so than big chunks of the sinew and the fat things that are going on in that. The other thing that's really cool is how you raise your steers. Right? Yeah. Our, our, we raise our bulls. You also hand feed. Yes. Oh, so wait. we <laughs> actually, normal. we actually, it's kind of fun because we'll have people visit their, you know, family members or friends and they'll come up and the kids will see those animals and they'll get some hay and they'll get there. They, and the animals are so used to it. To oh yeah. But they'll come right up and they can pat their nose and they'll, they know that bulls can be a little skittish because it's somebody new. And then pretty soon they're just as happy as clams to come up and pat their nose. In fact, we had somebody come in. We were we were sending some off on a big truck, and they were having a heck of a time. And then it came to ours, and they just walked in calm as could be. And the guy asked me if I trained them. <laughs> He's like, are these trained animals? Like, but, did you walk them around? Uh, yes. <laughs> and, but that's what happens when you raise them together in a small group for their entire lives in a comfortable place and they're not harassed and they're just calm they just have an easy wait harass life. you brought it up i get to talk about it harassing okay there are laws that you are it is illegal to harass wildlife okay cows and sheep are basically wildlife guys 
There are laws against harassing those things. And we live in very open range areas, right? We also live in a very, in areas where there's a lot of private land. If you trespass or if you go into open range and you mess with livestock, you are breaking the law. Cow tipping is very frowned upon. Seriously though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on a whole nother level. But like this whole story about the, the kid getting gored He's on public lands with an, a permit for a specific producer, mm -hmm. and he harassed the livestock. It's like going up to Yellowstone, pulling off the side of the road, meeting, meeting. Going up and touching a bison. Right! Whose fault is it? It's like, that's, there's a whole other meme and about I, the spoon I, made me do it. A lot of people think that the bison in Yellowstone are domesticated animals. They are very no. much not. So, guys, there's trespassing laws. There's... There's different ways to raise animals, just like dogs and cats, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like dogs and cats. You, the way you raise them is the way, and if you poke the bear, bear in the valley, <laughs> if you poke it, it's going to get mad. So whose fault is it? The accountability of humans needs to step up. And remember with any bull, no matter how gentle, once you have provoked yourself as an enemy, it's it's it is it is designed in its brain to defend its territory and its own. So then, as the age old saying, poke the bull in the horn. <laughs> yeah, but literally, <laughs> That's exactly right. And the, what happens to that to that animal? Okay, the saddest part about what happens to those animals. Same thing with dogs. Okay, and cats and and other animals that we deal with every day. Okay is once they have that in their brain that they need to be defending themselves all the time, they never back off. They never calm down, they never get out of the fight unless significant amounts of training and money and resources are put into this person or into that livestock. Mm -hmm. They never can recover from that. And so eventually they get sold, right? They get passed through and then they're, they're left alone the rest of their life, literally. Right, and put into feedlots and then taken care of because that's the only, that's the highest and best use of the animal now. And that's doing a disservice to the producer because now they can't breed that bull, right? Mm -hmm. It's doing a disservice to the next producers and the next feedlots that get it because now you've created so much more homework by that one ripple you created by, oh, I'm going to go ram this bull with my truck. Come on, people. We mm -hmm. live in America and we live in Southern Utah. Get over yourself. You know, we've we've had, and I remember as a as a kid, we had we had ended up buying some bulls off of the Wyoming uh, area, off those ranches. And with the wolves. Mm -hmm. With the wolves, and they had actually bred into it some of the Portuguese and Mexican fighting strains, and so these were pretty aggressive animals to and, fight with the wolves. Right. Okay. And so because they were doing that, however, once we got them there. We put them in a calm area. We ended up having a calm bowl that we had before. I, we called him Ferdinand. He was the easiest going thing in Matt. Aww. But we, we put them there, and in about a generation, they were very calm, very docile animals that you could deal with. And that's the, just the difference of how you can raise them and how you go through. They Whatever their genetics, if you can just keep them in that calm state, they'll generally stay Training. <laughs> a little bit like training. Right. But it's interesting as a meat as a meat producer, it's actually something you want to be careful of because if an animal is is stressed, you can actually you'll taste it in the animal. It sounds weird, but that cortisol, well, that same stress. I was just thinking stuff. about that. Oh, in the man. last couple of years, I've been actually very much aware of just to a human body what stress does. Mm -hmm. It takes three hours. For a human to calm down off of one cortisol high. So if you're stressed out for five minutes, mm -hmm. it takes you almost an entire day to recover from being stressed out for five minutes. I mean, you go to the doctor and he says, you've got high cholesterol. What is the main thing that he tells you to do? Keep calm. Keep your blood pressure down. Well, and it's the, it's the same with animals. And that's one of the reasons that we, you, you, when you're looking at something like this, whatever, whatever you're trying to look for when it comes to that food, the calmer the animal can stay throughout its life, the, the more peaceful, the less it has to worry about where's my next meal coming from or any of those things, you're going to have a much better quality beef and it's going to have a much better quality life. There's so many ways we can, we can start talking about all of the good things that you guys have to offer. 
make sure and catch them at Cornfest the second to last weekend in August in Enterprise. And will there accidentally be samples of me? You know, we always offer to anyone who asks. Who knew? <laughs> so even just calling and asking about their product, giving them a call at 435-231-1672. Right. Or you can go to Bear in the Valley Farms at gmail.com and send in an order that way if it's easier. And it's an incredible it's an incredible service that you're offering to all of Southern Utah because we have good quality meat that's raised in an environment of low stress. Please remember, we are in a livestock community, everybody. There are fence in, fence out laws. There is also livestock harassment laws. If you need some education on those, please look them up or contact your local brand inspector, Thane Marshall. Thank you so much for joining us for Wired Wednesday, Jesse. It's no, always an honor me. to have a good conversation, robust, full of making sure people understand. 435-592-2021 for all of your insurance needs. I'm with Farm Bureau Financial Services and with real estate, I'm at KW Realty with the Lorkin Group out of St. George. GoCedarCity.com or 435-592-2021. Thank you so much for joining us for Wired Wednesday. Thank you. All right, thank you. MJ, always a pleasure to have you on the show. This has been a very